Kia ora tātou, uh, ko tāro i rauri tuku ingo, uh, te taha tōku pāpa no Waikato, um, taupiri te maunga, Waikato te awa, uh, te awa mārahi tōku marae, ngā te amaru, ngā te pau oku hapu, te taha tōku māma ngō uh, ngā pohi, um, tautoro te maunga, kereru te roto, puna ki tere te awa, uh, te ringi te marae, ngā te moirewa, ngā te, ngā te hene oku hapu. This, this place here is called the Albo. It's a place where my great grandparents sort of looked after. So we've known this place all our lives growing up here. It sustains us through its kai um, that it provides through all the time in there and it spiritually looks after us too. Yeah, it's one of the real important for us. It's one of the bases why we settled here in Waikato. Historically, on the river, it was plentiful. It was corded or tuna balls that were the tuna on the migration or curl up together and roll down the river. Um, we find though, especially around this sort of area, they would, they would hear it and they knew of it. Um, knew the right time to come down and catch it. So they talked about um, having rowboats where they would wait for it to come, lean the boat over and the tuna ball would roll into it and actually push them over. And I guess in today's context, it's finding a place, getting access to just to go and get a tuna. Kia ora, Mirana. Um, Tarui is my husband. When we first met, he was a bit of a tuna slayer and I was a tuna scientist um, working on protecting tuna. And now we do um, work on tuna together. So we already knew that tuna are in massively in decline. Like there's no argument about that. There's all those impacts like habitat loss, climate change, the impacts of barriers like the flood pumps, parasites, um, the works. Okay, so we're at um, the Orchard Road flood pump in Te Kaufata. This is the, um, a new fish friendly pump based on a European design. Um, although I look after eels in that sort of size range and the smaller ones, so we'll still chop up our large big long fins and then some of our smaller ones they um, don't handle being bashed around inside. Uh, in Waikato we've got uh, around oh, over 60, 60 um, flood pumps, so it's all controlling Sort of inland areas to keep the water levels down for the land developments, farms. Over here's a housing development. The biggest issue is that they um, they chop up our eels. They nothing actually survives. It's pretty much 100% um, kill rate on these flood pumps. The whānau sort of know when the tuna are running, uh, especially the ones around home. Moving in towards summer when um, the eels start to migrate, normally during the big rains, for a couple of days. Two to three days, you know the tuna are getting ready to go. But for us here, we sort of those are the key times that we would look to come and um, trap and transfer our tuna, just get them past those barriers. In terms of what we want to see in the future for man-made barriers, is sort of improved technology and working in with, with the people, working in with the iwi and uh, mana whenua. Actually, looking at solutions for getting tuna past these pumps. I guess it's understanding the all the time within those catchments. You know, what's, what's their behaviours, how do they move? Whatever you're looking to do in that catchment, will it affect the migration? Affect the ability to get out to spawn? And knowing what they need before we put our needs in, in, in that, that space. And um, nothing's actually out there at the moment that's got a solution for our New Zealand longfin. Everything's just getting chopped up, so we need to, need to turn that around. I think if Tuna had a voice, they'd probably say, turn the switch off the pump. Um, and they stop chopping them up, let the land flood, look for a different land use instead of taking away the, the homes. I reckon they might say something like, we were here first and through your actions you've massively made us in decline and you have an obligation and a responsibility to look after us, to protect and enhance us. So this project was all about um, what are things that we can do to try and support Tuna and um, this used to be a paddock, so we got the diggers in and we created this pond and we fenced it off and planted these trees. The whole point was to create habitat for tuna. This was just one of many um, options, so yeah, it's five years old now and yeah, really happy with how it's going. After the ponds were built, within six weeks um, we chucked in some nets just to see um, how it was going and we caught over a hundred eels, so it was pretty happy how that went. 
and then we've just left the site to kind of mature and then we did another um, monitoring session two years ago and we got over 200 eels in the pond and that time the eels were like quite a range of sizes as well so we want to do more work now that it's matured look at how the tuna are using the space are they going back into the stream are they coming in here looking at the growth rates and kind of putting some more data around that but anecdotally the ponds seem to be doing really well like in that survey two years ago we looked at 10 sites along the river um, looked at two two lakes wahi and waikare and these ponds they were just as productive if not more um, productive than the lakes and definitely more productive than the main stem of the river itself so yeah i'm definitely a fan of creating more habitat for tuna so if I could challenge decision makers, I'd challenge them to look at a whole range of solutions for tuna and like make things like building these ponds easier, less, re um, less restrictions and to encourage people and put funding into those solutions because they're out there. Yeah, pretty much if you build it, they will come.